We were kids who had learned to crawl together. Nothing was going to change that either. There was a pomegranate tree on the hill north of my father's property. And one day, I carved our names into it. What does it say, Amir Aga? It says, Amir and Hassan, the sultans of Kabul. <laughs> that makes it official then. This tree belongs to us. Did you bring the book? Right here. I remember seeing the Kite Runner film. Okay. A few years ago. Loving it. Yeah. But there was a lot of um, other languages spoken. Do you? Yeah. In the play, do you have to speak any of we the do. other? We do. We speak really? a bit of Dari um, in the first sort of 10 minutes of the show. Um, and then... I'm thinking um, you may not have known that off your own I don't... <laughs> I, if I'm honest with you, I've, I've only seen a tiny little bit of the film. Oh, okay. I'm a, I'm so a, you had to learn it. I'm a book. I'm a purist when it comes right. to the book. Like, I... Um, I started watching a bit of the film and there was a lot missing from it, yeah. so I just had to, I had to kind of let it go, if it's I'm honest with you. It's funny when that happens, isn't it? Yeah. yeah so. And of course it's bound to happen. Yeah. But I, you know. It's all adaptation. And yeah. I believe the adaptation of the book to the play yeah. is actually closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The book was, I say this all the time, but the book was our Bible. Um, we constantly referring to it. Um, you know, obviously cuts had to be made. It's a two and a half hour show. Mm -hmm. um, but we all... We all know the book so well that mm. it's just it's just in there, you know. Mm. I, I suppose when you're actually rehearsing it, and you've been involved with this since the beginning of it here in this country, about what three years? Yeah, yeah. four about four years now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You must have felt a responsibility because they've sure. sold 31 million copies of this book. I know. And the film was meant to be this little baby film that you know no one saw, and yeah. yet it won you know Golden Globe awards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you must have felt really like you had to do it justice. Is that I something? I did. I mean, look, it's a lot of people's favorite, favorite story, but, you know, I can't go out there and try trying to please everyone, you know, it just doesn't work like that. I've just got to try and find, you know, my angle. Your way and, of telling it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and my way, and, you know, the, the tricky thing is, is that actually Amir is not a very likable character, no. you know, when I read the book, I didn't like him no. at all. So to try and find something in him to, to, you know, to tell the story was mm. a tricky one. Mm. And eventually I just thought, you know what, I don't need to like him to tell right. his story. I just need to be honest and truthful and let people make up their own minds. No, no, you can't. Please, no police. Just treat me, okay? Patch me up, but promise me no police. Sam, you have to realize that if I patch you up, that's going to destroy any forensic evidence. Then you won't be able to go to the police. Just do it. Television? Yeah. Theatre? Yeah. Which one? Oh, don't make me choose, <laughs> man. Um, uh, which one? Which one? You know what? Look, if I could have a... Uh, in an ideal world, I had, I'd have a healthy mix of the two, yeah. you know? Um, I think, you know, as an actor, you have to play the game a little bit, and that involves camera, you know? Mm. And... Um, you know, that's and much more profile on the television. More profile, and that's where the but money what, is. But watching you yeah. in the press call here today, do yeah. you feel you look very at home here. What on, on stage? stage? Yeah. yeah, man. I listen. I ever since the age of nine, it's all I, I knew. Yeah. It's what I wanted to do. Dad's an actor. It's in my yeah. genes. I, I I love it. I love it. Yeah. And I, so I will always come back to it. Yeah. yeah. strikes me that Kite Runner would be perfect for adaptation to the stage. Is it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I, at the heart of the story is one man's search for redemption. Yeah. Uh, and by giving him a, his voice in the theatre, you make a really direct connection with the audience. Yes. The trick, I think a very clever trick of the adaptation, is to find those moments which are wonderfully theatrical around it 
to make for a, a, an evening which is much more than a one person show it's absolutely a, a, a company piece of work uh, but as I say at the heart of it is this one man search we're here uh, on a press call and we've seen a couple of scenes played out it strikes me that the music is integral and, yes. it, and it's just this underpinning of the whole thing how, how important was that how did you tackle that does he know all his cues? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, there's a, sort of absolutely. So, uh, yeah, there's a tabla player who's on stage for nearly all of the show. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, there's a sequence in America where he leaves the stage, you know, but he, even in America he comes back halfway through for reasons. So if you come and see it, you'll discover. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the, the sort of musical accompaniment uh, to it uh, is essential. But actually, the way the music works is it actually becomes another character. Mm. Um, and yes, there's a tabla player, but there are also singing bowls. There's an instrument called a schwerbogen, which you'll have to buy a ticket to find out what it is. Uh, uh, and there are also voices, so there are sung sequences uh, off stage, but a sort of a vocal accompaniment to sequences. So it's the, the texture of the sound is hugely important to it, hugely important. Um, I'm pleased to see people of different cultures and, and, and backgrounds on stage. How important is the cultural, the religious, the political background to this story, do you think? Because the themes are universal. Yeah. How, I mean, I find it vastly interesting. Do you think it, it is really important or is this just a story and it happens to be set in it? I think it's both of those things. Yeah. The story works for everybody. Yeah. Um, but the fact that the cultural references are really specific adds another texture to it. For those of us that don't know much about that culture, it's fascinating yeah. and moving. Because I think a lot of people find that politics and a lot of the aspects of religious, religion and everything very complicated to understand. Yeah, and so absolutely. I suppose this is an entry point. And, and I think giving a, a, a sort of dignity to, to the Muslim culture at the moment is a hugely important thing mm. to be doing, to see a wedding to hear the prayers, to uh, celebrate uh, an incredibly rich culture and religion in the way that this play does, but it also challenges it, yes. uh, it's very, very important. And the other very exciting thing about being here over the last couple of weeks whilst we've been performing is that the audience that is coming into the theatre is much more diverse than you would normally expect to Isn't see. Isn't that standing up. It's really, it's a young audience uh, and there are a very high percentage of people from a whole range of different cultures coming to it, which is fantastically exciting, actually. Now, you're a local boy from Hackney. I am. And uh, My mum will kill mom? me for that. She will kill me for <laughs> saying that. Because we weren't actually in Hackney for that oh, right. long. Oh, okay. From but London. So, yeah, okay. I'm in London now. But London. your mother's background is Iraqi, yeah? Iran. Iran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Iranian, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, has that helped you in any way? Right? Yeah, I mean, look, I, the, the last time I was in Iran was about 20 plus years ago. Mm. So I have this memory of the place as, uh, as a boy. Mm. And that actually was, was helpful mm. because actually when I'm in Afghanistan in this play, I am a kid, I'm playing a mm. kid. But you know what, the Middle East has a very particular kind of s sort of smell and feel mm. and a dry sort of gorgeousness to it. And I think mm. unless you've been there, you, you, you can't you, you right. can't really describe it yeah. and so I certainly have that you know in my skin and, and in my bones and I think that helped that helped tell this story in yeah. some way what's you know? what's your favorite bit of this play it's such a beautiful story gosh that's hard that's really hard mate um, there's so much it's, it's a touching story isn't it? it is incredibly touching yeah. there's so much that I relate to in it um, I think everyone relates to it because it's it's full of fathers and sons and brothers yeah. and friends and right. um, so it's it's really tricky to say to to pick out a particular moment that I love. Um, you know, I love I love I love the playing stuff with with Hassan. You mm. know, that's a lot of fun mm. and um, it's quite a scary thing to do to try and as a 36 year old man to try and pretend to be a 12 year old boy. <laughs> Um, but to just have the bravery to commit to that and just run around stage having having fun and playing is is a great feeling actually. It's well, a good luck feeling. with it all. Thanks. Congratulations. Cheers. Thank you. In Thank a you. sentence, when it comes to words, Hassan is an imbecile. Ah, I see. Thanks, Amiraga. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I always felt guilty about it later, but I told myself it was nothing but a harmless prank. Go on, read the story, Aga. Hassan's favorite book was the Shah Nama, the 10th century epic of ancient Persian heroes. And his favorite story was Rastam and Sohrab. In the story, the great 
Warrior, Rostam, mortally wounds his nemesis, Sohrab, only to discover that Sohrab is his long-lost son. Thank you.